Well, happening now, let's take you live to the Ministry of Finance, where the minister is addressing the country. Honorable Dr. Alex Amparin, uh, who is uh, Deputy Minister for, for Finance. Uh, Honorable Alex and I share a lot in common. We both work in the CSO space. Uh, we both uh, done work in the area of taxes, resource taxation. Uh, he's a fiscal tax expert, and so he's bringing a lot of knowledge and value to the work of the Ministry of, of Finance. So, Honorable Alex Ampavin, Dr. Alex Ampavin, <laughs> is Deputy Minister for, for Finance. And indeed, Honorable Abra has already drew my attention this morning that because we are all doctors, 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 I have to find a way to also become a <laughs> doctor. <laughs> the third the, the second deputy minister, who is not with us, is travelled for official duty, is Honourable Dr. Stephen Amwa, uh, MP for Insha Insha Insha. Uh, he is also well known to me. We've known each other from the the youth uh, of the party. Uh, we did things together in the past in Tescon, and you know other party-related uh, activities. And so the chemistry is there. We're going to work closely together to deliver on our mandate. The chief director of the Ministry of Finance, the indefatigable uh, Eva Mens, the directors and staff of the Ministry uh, of, of Finance, and of course, our media friends, my brothers and sisters from the, the media community, I acknowledge you and I thank you for your for your for your hard work for the great. But for you, uh, there will not be government because government is about the government, the government, and those who are governed, those who are governed, right? And right. you constitute, and you constitute a, very important a very important link between the two, between the two uh, sides of the, the size of, of the, the equation of the equation. And this is why we will continue to cherish and appreciate the work that we As part of measures to enhance transparency and accountability in our economic management. In today's briefing, we'll update you on the implementation of the IMF supported PCPEC, the progress made towards completing the external debt restructuring program and the status of implementation of the SME Group and Opportunity Program, a new initiative the Ministry is pursuing. We will also take the opportunity to provide an update on the performance of the economy for the first quarter of this year. In the first edition of this series, which was presented on 26 March 2024, uh, indicated that as part of measures to pursue an inclusive approach to economic management, we will institute, among others, a joint economic roundtable with the academia to discuss topical economic issues and to bring the expertise of academia to bear on policy making. A Ghana Development Forum, a Ghana Development Forum to bring various stakeholders together to discuss and build consensus on key interventions such as the IMF program and the debt restructuring program, among others. Then a monthly update on the state of the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to inform you that we have made significant progress in these inclusive initiatives. The monthly press briefing on the economy has now come to stay as this is the third of such updates. We have begun work on the Joint Economic Roundtable with the University of Ghana and have adopted a concept note for the roundtable. We have also drafted an MOU on the subject to be signed by the parties shortly. We have programmed our first roundtable to take place in June 2024. We also have programmed to hold the Ghana Development Forum in July 2024. Others have proposed that we call it the National Economic Summit. We are discussing what name we will use eventually. 
But what is important is that it will be a platform, a great platform, to bring all stakeholders in the management of our economy. Uh, we sit here, but we do not claim monopoly over the ideas, all the ideas that we need to manage our economy. And therefore, we'll provide that platform to build consensus on some of the major, major policies we are implementing as a government. Ladies and gentlemen, you recall that in my first monthly press update to you on 26th March 2024, I indicated again that one of the priorities of government for the rest of 2024 and beyond is to stay the course on the implementation of the IMF program. I also notified you that Ghana will be hosting an IMF mission from the 2nd to the 12th of April 2024 to undertake the second review of the uh, program following the approval of the program in May 2023 and the completion of the first review of the program in January 2024, both of which resulted in a total disbursement of $1.2 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, the second review mission by the IMF staff was successfully concluded on 13th April 2024, enabling Ghana to reach a staff level agreement on the second review with the IMF staff. With the staff level agreement now secured, it is expected that the executive board of the fund will sit on Ghana's second review for consideration and approval sometime in June to unlock the third tranche of $360 million, which will bring the total disbursements to 1.56 billion United States dollars. The second review mission, which was conducted would end December 2023, as the test date was based on key performance indicators, including six quantitative performance criteria, three indicative targets, and one structural benchmark that were due at the end of December 2023 as well as four structural benchmarks due at the end of March 2024. The fund assessed Ghana's performance under the second review as very strong. As most of the quantitative performance criteria and the indicative targets are judged by the fund staff were met. In addition, Ghana satisfied all five but one structural benchmark due by end December 2023 and end March 2024. The assessment also shows great strides in our social protection interventions to mitigate the cost of adjustment on the poor and the vulnerable. What this means in simple language, ladies and gentlemen, is that at the end of 2023, we achieved the following targets under the program, subject to the approval of the IMF Executive Board in June. Minimum net international reserves, cumulative change of $988.2 million, zero central bank borrowing, a ceiling cumulative of 4.3 billion Ghana cities for the primary deficit on commitment basis, zero accumulation of external debt payments, a non-concessional borrowing limit of $66.2 million in present value terms and zero collateralized borrowing by the central government and state-owned enterprises. In addition, at the end of December 2023, Ghana achieved the following indicative targets. A minimum of 114.19 billion Ghana cities for non-oil public revenue, and a minimum of 4.07 billion Ghana cities in social spending. reforms. We've expanded the gift mix infrastructure to include to include over 280 IGF reliant institutions. 
We've published on PURC's website the final report of the first quarterly audit on ECG's single account. The Bank of Ghana and the Ministry of Finance have designed and will soon begin the implementation of a credible, comprehensive, and cost-effective plan that seeks to address NIB's challenges, the National Investment Bank. And we've developed a centralized inventory of all ongoing and planned public investment projects that have been approved by cabinet. Ladies and gentlemen, the positive results of the first and second review of the implementation of the IMF program testify that we are achieving the program's objective of restoring macroeconomic stability and debt sustainability, building resilience through the implementation of strong and wide-ranging structural reforms, and laying the foundations for stronger and more inclusive growth, whilst protecting the poor and the vulnerable. We are now seeing signs of macro stability and economic recovery. And I'm confident to say that the recovery has been strong. It has been strong and we will pursue all the policies that are necessary to sustain the gains we have made. This is exemplified by the following data I wish to provide. Growth turned out to be more resilient and robust in 2023 than initially programmed, as GDP grew by 2.9% compared to the original pro projection of 1.5% and the revised projection of 2.3%. We expect growth to continue its upward trajectory to average 5% in the medium term as we implement our growth strategy under the PCPEG, supported by the revival of Ghana's industrialization drive, modernization of agriculture, with a focus on value addition to create economic uh, and employment opportunities, as well as SME growth and financing. Inflation is declining. Headline inflation declined by 31 percentage points from 54.1 percent at the end of 2022 to 23.2 percent at the end of December 2023. This was before inflation inched up slightly to 25.8 percent in March 2024, due largely to base effect, but we have seen it trending downward uh, again. The downward trend is expected to continue over the medium term horizon, with inflation returning to the target band of 8 plus or minus 2% by 2025. This will be largely achieved because of the fiscal consolidation efforts of government, tight monetary policy, exchange rate stability, as well as improved food production, local food production. Gross international reserves is also improving and now stands at $6.2 billion, covering 2.7 months of import cover at the end of February 2024, compared to $5.9 billion in the corresponding period of 2022. Gross international reserve is expected to improve to cover at least 4.4 months of import cover in the medium term, to be supported by external inflows from the IMF, the World Bank, and other development partners. The government's gold for oil program, gold for oil program, the BOG's gold for reserve program, as well as the COCO syndicated uh, funds. But for recent pressures, we are seeing on the exchange rate movement, ladies and gentlemen, the exchange rate has been largely stabilized over some time with the depreciation of the city against the US dollar halving from 54.2% at the end of November 2022 to 27.8% at the end of December 2023. The city stability has continued into 2024 with a cumulative depreciation of 14.2% as of May 20th, 2024, compared to 20.7% recorded in the same period in 2023. 
And therefore, people may see the city depreciating uh, fast uh, recently. If you compare the depreciation year to date, from January to date, the city has depreciated by about 14.2%. Same time last year, it depreciated by 20.7%. So on that you know, comparative basis, we, we are safe to conclude that the city is still strong, very strong. We expect the stability to improve into the medium term as we complete debt restructuring, as we make progress on fiscal consolidation, and as we improve on our reserves over the medium term. The recent pressures on the city that I have uh, referred to uh, are largely as a result of the strengthening of the US dollar against major trading currencies across the world, including ours. And therefore, we expect that as the US uh, currency uh, also moderates in its strength, the effect will be felt on, on, our, on our currency. Another reason is the seasonal forex demand, including uh, elevated demand from corporate institutions. Then also, we have paid contractors. I want to say that the complaints of no money and no money and no money, we don't hear that anymore because we have paid and paid contractors. As of now, year to date, I think we've spent some 49 billion Ghana cities. Same time last year, we did 41 billion Ghana cities. And so this demonstrates that a lot of liquidity, city liquidity, is in the market. And we have seen uh, some people uh, looking for uh, US uh, dollars to uh, buy with the cities that uh, we, ha we have put out, out there. And so these are some of the reasons, including the payments to IPPs, independent power producers. You will recall that we started negotiating with them as a result of which we, have to, we had to make uh, a bullet payment, one off payment, uh, amounting to some uh, 400 million United States dollars. And so they all put pressure on the, on the city. But also, uh, what is known to all of us, the common uh, reason is speculation. So much speculation out there. And we need people to uh, uh, know that this speculation is not helping us. It's not helping the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Finance will continue to work with the Bank of Ghana to implement measures to address the rapid depreciation of the city. And some of the measures that we have already put in place, and I was told this morning that we are already seeing the, the results uh, of the effect of this uh, uh, policy, uh, policies and measures we, we, we have put in place. So we are fast-tracking the fiscal consolidation process through rationalizing spending and enhancing revenue mobilization, intensification of the Gold for Oil program, and appropriate FX interventions by the Bank of Ghana. We are also intensifying, through the Bank of Ghana, the Gold for the Reserve program, what they also call the Gold Purchases uh, program. The disbursement of the third tranche under the IMF uh, program, which we are expecting in June, is also going to support the building of uh, foreign exchange reserves. And also disbursement from other ongoing projects, uh, including the $150 million uh, facility, World Bank facility, which Parliament approved last week, uh, Friday, will all come in to support the, the reserves. We're also expecting the disbursement of 300 million United States dollars under the World Bank Development Policy Operation 2, possibly in the third quarter of this year, and disbursement of 200 million dollars to Ghana Exim Bank and Ghana Commercial Bank, GCB, by EBIT, ECOWAS Bank for Investment and 
uh, development later in the year. And, of course, again, what is known to us, the expected 2024-2025 cocoa syndication uh, proceeds in the fourth, fourth quarter of this year. They will all crystallize and come together to support the build-up of the reserves uh, in order to strengthen the city uh, as well as support the budget in the implementation. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in all, we expect in total disbursements of 2.32 billion US dollars before the end of the year to add to the significant foreign Asian reserves already built up by the Bank of Ghana. And on this basis, I wish to assure the Ghanaian people that there is enough foreign exchange supply in the market. Hence, there is no need to rush to buy Forex. There is enough foreign exchange on the market and we will continue to ensure that the supply is sustained, if not even increased. Ladies and gentlemen, the fiscal consolidation program is holding. As primary balance on commitment basis improved by about 4 percentage of 0.3% of GDP at the end of 2023. Preliminary fiscal data for first quarter of this year showed that the primary balance on commitment was a deficit of 0.6% of GDP against the deficit target of 0.2% of GDP, largely on the back of delays in the implementation of some of the 2024 revenue measures approved for the 2024 budget. We plan to fast track revenue mobilization and subsequently enable us to achieve our primary balance target of a surplus of 0.5% in 2024 and 1.5% of GDP in the 2025-2028 period. In addition, we are working to restore debt sustainability by 2028. The public debt trajectory it's already showing signs of improvement as the debt to GDP ratio reduced to 71.4% of GDP at the end of 2023 to uh, from 73.5% of GDP at the end of 2022. We have also strengthened our social protection interventions to ensure that the poor and the most vulnerable are protected from the impact of the economic difficulties and adjustment. We've doubled, for example, the benefits under the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty Program. And we've done this two years in a row. We've also indexed the program, the LEAP benefits to inflation, so that the effect of inflation does not wipe off the benefits the LEAP delivers to our people. We have also increased the benefit under the Ghana School Feeding uh, Program by 25%. And we have also increased allocation to the National Health Insurance Scheme by more than 40%. In addition to this, we have increased the allocation to the capitation grant by 25% to support basic education. So ladies and gentlemen, as we implement the fiscal consolidation, we have not forgotten of the poor and the vulnerable. Ours is to promote inclusive growth. And this is demonstrated by the increasing spending that we are seeing in these social uh, in, in, in for our people. As part of the implementation of the PCPEC, Ladies and gentlemen, Cabinet has approved the plan for restructuring and recapitalization of the National Investment Bank. This will require a program projection of about 2.3 billion Ghana cities. And this will be done over the next 12 months. The first tranche of 400 million Ghana cities is expected to be transferred to the National Investment Bank before the end of this month. 
May 2024. And this demonstrates our commitment to implementing the recapitalization and restructuring uh, program for uh, NIB. The plan also includes measures to strengthen the governance structure. Government has intervened in NIB in the past. And therefore, this time around, this intervention, the capital intervention, is going to be backed by governance reforms in NIB in order to assure us and the people of Ghana that their money, your money, that we are putting in, into NIB will be managed and managed uh, well. Some of the governance reforms will include strengthening the structure and operational efficiency of the bank, enhance supervision, and also to improve risk management to sustain the financial viability of the bank. We will continue to implement strong and ambitious structural reforms in other areas of public resource or public financial management, including tax policy, revenue administration, and other relevant reforms that will support the uh, structural uh, strengthening of, of our economy, as well as helping to address structural weaknesses and to enhance our resilience to shocks. Ladies and gentlemen, we are making remarkable progress towards restoration of macroeconomic stability and economic recovery. And we are not going to relent. In spite of the fiscal pressures, including security spending to maintain peace and order, we are determined to hold the line to ensure that we meet our fiscal targets for the year. We will not hesitate to make any necessary adjustment that will ensure that we do not deviate from the fiscal path. Now, let me give you updates on the debt restructuring. You may recall that we successfully concluded the domestic debt exchange program in 2023, following the launch of the government's comprehensive debt restructuring operation in December 2022. We are now at the final stages of completing the external debt restructuring program as well. Since the debt restructuring program began, government financing sources have been limited to Treasury bills. Market participants have, however, raised concerns about the relatively high rates of T-bills compared to the pre-DDEP interest rates. But I want to assure them on two fronts. We have successfully paid two bullet coupons, each of about 6 billion Ghana cities for the domestic DDEP. And we want to assure the market, come August 2024, the third coupon will also be earned. We will continue to honor our obligations and on time. I want to give the market this assurance. The second assurance is that lower portfolio risk with regard to the average weighted interest rate, which we have achieved under the DD uh, program, is one of the strongest features of the program. The pre-DDEP weighted average interest rate was around 21%. This has, however, reduced by 7.5 percentage points to around 13.5%. And this we achieved on account of a relatively small weight of the short-term instruments in the entire public debt portfolio. Let me even add a third assurance. We are all seeing signs of economic stabilization emerging. And the government, as I have already enumerated, has made significant progress in stabilizing the macroeconomy on the back of increasing growth, improved primary and fiscal balance, declining interest rates and inflation, albeit some instability in the exchange rate arising mainly from seasonal factors and the strengthening of the dollar, as I indicated earlier. We are therefore confident 
of locking in these positive gains in the near term with a further reduction in these key economic aggregates to improve domestic market sentiments post DDEP. And so for market participants, this is our assurance to you. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may further recall, we also launched two external debt operations, the official bilateral creditors debt restructuring and the commercial creditors debt restructuring. In December 2022, Ghana requested for debt treatment under the G20 Common Framework. This framework was first adopted in 2020 as one of the most important decisions by the G20 and endorsed by the Paris Club for 73 eligible developing countries. Currently, four countries have requested this debt treatment, including Ghana. Financing assurances were given by the Official Creditor Committee, established as part of the Common Framework. On 12 January 2024, prior to the IMF Executive Board approval of the first review of the fund program, Ghana received financing assurance upon reaching an agreement in principle with the Official Creditor Committee. This, as we have reported over and over, would deliver significant debt relief to our country. But I'm happy, ladies and gentlemen, to announce that we have moved beyond agreement in principle. As of yesterday, 3rd May 2024, we officially received the draft memorandum of understanding from the official creditor committee. The government, therefore, with support from our financial and legal advisors, will quickly review this draft agreement with a view to finalizing and signing the agreement with the OCC as soon as possible. And so for all of those who have been waiting and waiting and as of, I, I believe, last week, I read from the uh, front pages, you know, of some of our media uh, houses uh, indicating that Ghana received the draft MOU. I, I can imagine your anticipation. And so I'm happy to say that we have now formally received the draft MOU. And we are going to work harder and quickly to round up the negotiation and sign the MOU. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, in a very constructive manner, also made significant and good progress on our euro bond holders. It is important to note that we are operating under a complex set of constraints as part of the IMF debt sustainability thresholds. And this formed the context and basis of discussions for a mutual understanding of the financial parameters with our euro bond holders. We've held several rounds of negotiations on proposals and counter-proposals on the Eurobond treatment. This led to a series of restrictive discussions. For about three weeks, just before the IMF spring meetings, which ended successfully on the 15th of April, 2024. At the end of these discussions, we ended with very narrow differences between our position and those of the bondholders. But let me assure you that considerable progress is being made towards a constructive solution that will be acceptable to all parties. It is for this reason that we are rather confident and more optimistic that we can continue to work together on solutions that would deliver an acceptable compromise for all stakeholders, both the government party and the, the bondholders. We are determined to reach an agreement with our bondholders and our commercial creditors as well on terms that are consistent with the IMF program parameters. And we will put all our efforts towards attaining that objective in the coming weeks. Let me now touch on SME growth and the opportunity program. Ladies and gentlemen, as it stands, SMEs in Ghana account for 92% of existing companies. 
85% of manufacturing jobs and 70% of GDP. Within that context, our small and medium enterprises represent a significant opportunity for providing growth and employment that is sustainable, inclusive, and impactful. In fact, I've seen data that suggests that 80% of employment in Ghana are created by SMEs. With that in mind, the SME Growth and Opportunity Program is being designed to consolidate ongoing SME support programs and offer better targeted support to a select number of companies that have the potential to transition from SMEs to large businesses under the SME Champions Initiative. The program will be coordinated by the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Trade and Industry. The Ghana Enterprises Agency, Ghana Exim Bank, and Development Bank Ghana, which work with some other commercial banks, what we call the, F the PFIs, will offer tailor tailored technical and financial support to program beneficiaries. And I wish to announce also that as part of this program, we will soon roll out a nationwide training program for SMEs in basic accounting practices in order to improve on their uh, 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 credit worthiness and also to assure the banks that the risk of lending to SMEs will be abated once the SMEs are given this uh, capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, the program framework prioritizes targeted interventions, loan recovery, technical training and handling support for beneficiaries, as well as financing instruments such as loans, equity investments, and interest subsidies, which will all be provided through multifaceted funding sources so that we can reach our desired goal of creating SME champions over the near term. Stakeholder consultations on the program design have begun in earnest, and we anticipate the SME Growth and Opportunity Program to be launched on the 16th of July 2024 at the National SME Summit which will be addressed by His Excellency the President of the Republic. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to use this occasion to express our sincere thanks to the Almighty Allah for his continuous guidance and blessings on our path to economic recovery towards improving opportunities and prosperity for the people of Ghana. Our sincere appreciation also goes to His Excellency the President for his visionary leadership and direction. I would also like to recognize the instrumental role the IMF has played throughout this period, and also the, the World Bank, as well as other development uh, partners. The successful implementation of the IMF program so far, as well as other initiatives of government, including the debt restructuring program, would not have been possible without the collective efforts of all Ghanaians. And I'd like to mention in particular parliament, civil society organizations, organized labor, faith-based organizations, employer associations, sector ministers, staff of various ministries, departments, and agencies, financial sector players, the private sector players, and more importantly, you, the media uh, community uh, in, in our country. It is our that through our collective effort, we would deliver our common objective of restoring macro stability and debt sustainability and promote stronger and more inclusive growth whilst protecting the poor and the vulnerable. The medium term is bright, ladies and gentlemen, and we can all, as stakeholders, work together to continue to achieve the, the gains that we are, we are making and put our economy on the path to sustain growth and development. We want to increase growth from the current 2.9% to 5% in the medium term. We want to reduce inflation from the current 25% to 8 plus or minus 2% by 2025. 
we want to improve the balance at the primary balance on commitment basis from a deficit of 0.3% of GDP in 2023 to a surplus of 1.5% by 2025. We want to increase the tax to GDP ratio from the current 14% to 18% in the medium term. We will fully restore debt sustainability by 2028. And we will continue to improve on gross international reserves to cover not less than 4.5 months of import cover in the medium term. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the medium term economic outlook is bright. It's bright. It is good. And we all must put our hands on deck. We all must continue to support the efforts of government. This is the government we have, and this is the country that we have. We cannot go anywhere else and find better opportunities for ourselves. We have to create these opportunities here for ourselves and for our children and grandchildren. And so I want to call on all of you, the people of Ghana, to stand behind our president, to stand behind our government, so that we go through this pain we have already experienced, but also we can rejoice at the emerging recovery of our economy, so that we can even become better in the near future as we and as we return the economy from the hardship that we have gone through to the era of better economic management and better economic results and better economic opportunities for our people. And so I thank you very much for the opportunity. Honorable Minister, thank you so much for the insightful and inspiring presentation. Um, it's, it's quite loaded, but uh, for the benefit of our listeners and viewers who have joined us from home and from their offices, and for our friends from the media who are here, there are so many things that Honorable Minister mentioned, but uh, I have some six key points as highlights in the presentation. Uh, first of all, we have Honorable Minister's assurance that when it comes to the IMF-supported PCPEC program, Ghana will stay the course and they will make sure that we have a successful uh, implementation of the program. On the CD, the Honorable Minister has also mentioned that there is no cause for panic, there is no cause for speculation, there is enough forest in the space. If you need currencies, you will get it. There is no need to say, let me go and change all my money and, and hide it. Minister has taken us through key interventions that government is putting in place to ensure that the city remains strong, including building reserves. Minister assured us that beyond the BOG's reserves, uh, the country is also expecting that before the year ends, a total disbursement of about 2.23 billion US dollars from various sources, including the World Bank, the Cocoa Syndication, and EBIT will come into the system uh, to continue to strengthen the city. On the third point, Minister outlined government's interventions towards uh, the protection of the poor and mentioned that allocation to the key social protection programs uh, have been increased. Allocation to LIP has doubled, school feeding program allocation up by 25%, increased allocation to NHIS by 4%, allocation to the capitation grant to 25%. On the challenges faced by NIB, Minister has assured us that government is going to inject a total of 2.3 billion Ghana cities to recapitalize NIB. And with that, Minister also assured us that within the next one month, there will be a tranche of 400 million Ghana CD disbursement to NIB. Also, Minister mentioned some governance reforms that they are putting in place at the bank, including structural and supervision reforms, so that uh, the output will be more positive. On the fifth issue, Honorable Minister mentioned debt restructuring. 
and giving us the assurance that when it comes to expected coupon payments, uh, we should be rest assured that the ministry will meet its obligations when they fall due. Honorable Minister mentioned that over the period, there has been two successful payments of coupons, 600 million Ghana cities each paid and paid on time. And therefore, when the need arises, government will be able to pay on time. Minister also announced that government of Ghana has received a draft MOU from the official creditors, the OCCs, and government through the Ministry of Finance will work diligently to ensure that uh, the necessary inputs and also signing takes place. Minister also gave progress on euro bond holders also with regards to debt exchange. Finally, the Honorable Minister mentioned the SME Growth and Opportunity Program, looking at how important SMEs are in Ghana's economic dispensation and outlined the kind of interventions that government is willing to put in place, including a nationwide capacity enhancement for our SMEs. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are summaries of presentation by the Honorable Minister for Finance, Dr. Mohammed Ami Adam. If you have any question, this is the good time to ask. Uh, if you show by hand, they will bring the microphone for you to ask your questions. We can take a, a, a round for five, and hopefully, if there is time, take more. If not, I think it should be sufficient to take a first round. But before we, we get any hands, permit me to once again acknowledge our media partners. We, we have a long list of press here, uh, here to cover and report. We thank you for joining us. Also picking the press briefing live, as Honorable Minister speaks, is GTV, Joy News, Asasi Radio, ABC News GH, and on Facebook we are streaming at Ministry of Finance and at Ministry of Information. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, show by hand. Okay. I saw another hand at the back. Okay, so we'll take one, two. If there are any hands, please, this is the best time to... Okay, there are two more. So let's start from here. One, two, and then we'll do three and four. Yes. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kanoya. Uh, I work at Asasi Radio. Uh, some good news coming in uh, as regards uh, MOE. But I would like to know what it means for Ghanaians. Thank you for the question, Anna. We'll take more those. Uh, right, thank you very much. So, um, Honorable Minister, good morning. Good morning. Some of the. Kindly uh, mention your name and application. Oh, okay. The name is Justice. I work for Shenhua News Agency. So currently, um, even before the signing of the MOU, uh, what is the debt service to revenue ratio we are doing currently? And then what is the target we expect to you know, achieve when the MOU is done and then we settle these issues with the external creditors committee? Thank you. Thank you, Justice. I saw a hand here. About two hands here. OK. Go ahead. Okay. okay, please go ahead and we'll take the two. So, my point is the minister made a mention of the fact that the free fall of the cities has been to pay them for taxes and also IPs. But somewhere last year, the minority party also complained. Are you starting? I didn't hear you. So, I'm saying my is on the free fall of the cities. In your statement, what you said was due to the public duty. Now, somewhere last week, the minority in Parliament also made mention of the fact that one, as due to the payment for church work, and also they said it's unbiased. But I just want to get a response. Due to? That. Due to what? Um, the payment for church bill. And also, the payments are not being completed. Okay, I believe the Honorable Minister will respond when we are done. Yes, okay. I'll call your name and affiliation, please.
for him to be great. Would that have any effect on the DSA that has been prepared by the IMF? And would a better than anticipated group improve your chances of uh, securing your deal with the one to hold this? Thank you for the question, Echo. Okay. okay. Yeah, yes. Minister, the, we are taking the last one just so that you can move for the meeting. So we take the last question. Please. Graphic. Um, okay. I just wanted to ask. Um, please name and affiliation, please. Ivan Obu's graphic. Um, updates on the implementation of the EVA system um, by the GRE. Um, the GRE has indicated that um, it intends to onboard about 600 businesses by June, and June is just some few weeks ago. So I want to find out if the minister has updates of how many businesses have been onboarded so far, and then why some major um, retail outlets are still yet to be onboarded on this EVA system. Thank you so much for the question. Honorable Minister. If you, if you just joined this press briefing, we are live on GTV, Joy News, Asasi Radio, ABC News GH, and streaming on Facebook at Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Information. Honorable Minister. Well, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister, for information. If I got the first question right, it was on the signing of the MOU uh, with the OCCs. What does that mean for, for Ghana and maybe for Ghanaians? I mean, first of all, I mean, simply, first of all, we know that a lot of projects, very important projects, have stalled as a result of uh, the debt suspension. And uh, following the declaration of the debt uh, uh, standstill, uh, most of this, if not all, have not been disbursing towards uh, uh, projects. And so with the signing of the MOU, it signals officially an end to our negotiation with the official creditors. We will then immediately sign bilateral agreements with each of the OCC uh, members because they have different uh, projects uh, which they are funding uh, in Ghana. But what it also means is that disbursement will start to flow uh, in towards those uh, projects. And we should see the uh, contractors going back to site to, to continue the, the, with the projects. Uh, some of the projects around the country include major road projects you know and, and therefore when you uh, bring this negotiation to a close by the formal sign of the MOU it, it means a resumption of, of activity on this stalled uh, project. It also gives us some relief um, what people will call uh, time relief uh, in terms of the extension of the, the maturity and, and therefore uh, money that we would have been using to service the debt uh, could, in the meantime, uh, go into uh, financing other development uh, projects. The second question on the city, uh, we enumerated a number of factors uh, accounting for the uh, depreciation uh, of the city. And the one we said is the payments uh, to contractors, uh, be, 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 which has increased city liquidity in the market, uh, payment to IPPs uh, as, a, as a result of the bullet we had to do uh, following the uh, negotiation we had with, with, with IPPs to ensure that they continue to supply power uh, to to the country. We've also talked about the strengthening of the of the U.S. Uh, uh, currency against major uh, trading currencies. So there are a host of uh, reasons uh, uh, responsible for for this. Now you are quoting the minority. That's saying that it's as a result of payment for treasury bills which have not been budgeted for. If you understand budget, budget has, I would say, three main sources of revenue. The taxes we collect, the grants we receive, but also financing, what we call financing. Financing means borrow, okay? And how much we borrow, how much financing 
we need for this year's budget has been captured in the budget. So anybody who has taken this budget knows that there is financing component of the budget and how much we are going to find. How much is that? 40? How much is the financing for this year? 62. 62 billion cities is the financing. And you can borrow. And the only source of uh, uh, financing for now is treasury bills. So we are bro borrowing through treasury bills to address the financing component of the budget. And so uh, anybody who says that uh, uh, maybe uh, the person's understanding of the budget that we have been approving in parliament is suspect. The next question is the economy has performed better than anticipated. Will that have effect on the DSA? I know why you are asking this question. <laughs> it's following the story you did last week, you know. Yes, but I mean, I can tell you that, yes, once the economy improves, your growth uh, increases uh, more than your, your target, and then uh, other fundamentals of the economy are changing uh, positively, it will definitely have uh, effect on your, on your DSA. But uh, this can only be, um, how do I say, formally uh, executed through a review of the DSA until uh, that review, uh, you certainly cannot go out and say that your DSA should be higher or lower. There are processes of uh, reviewing the, the DSAs. And so that is what I can say on that. Your other question, whether it will improve on our chances with the bondholders, I'm not going to comment on that because we are in negotiation, and I do not want to, to preempt some of the, the fundamental features of the negotiation. So uh, I hope you understand, understand me. The last question on EVAT. I'm going to invite the Honorable Minister of State to respond to this question. Honorable Abner. <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, um, I know that the EVAT is part of the reforms that we are undertaking at the GRA to make sure uh, we maximize domestic revenue uh, mobilization. As part of that, it's in two phases. Um, GRA wants to target 80% of the business, 80, um, the businesses that bring in 80% of the revenue. And they are the bigger firms, the larger ones. And so currently, that is what GRA is focused on. The small retail forms the 20% parts. So GRA wants to complete the onboarding of the uh, businesses that bring in about 80% of the revenue. Once they are done, um, the other phase of the 20% will also follow through. And clearly, you can see that we have um, witnessed some positives in the revenue numbers from VAT generation. It happened last year, and we are on course uh, to onboard and complete the process this year and make sure we maximize the revenue that is needed for um, the country. So that's what I, I can say for now. We're doing the 80%. Once they are done with onboarding of the businesses that bring in the 80%, they'll go on to um, the 20%, which includes um, the retail space. And so they will also um, be brought on board. Thank you. I can't give you the exact number, but that is the process. And so, um, and you can also, like I said, check the revenue numbers and look at the VAT components. Some have um, come on board, and so you have seen some improvements in the VAT collections. That alone should give you hope that once we are able to do all, um, we should be able to rake in more revenue and uh, um, VAT for us. Thank you very much, Minister, for the opportunity. So this is our response to graphics front page publication, EVAT in limbo, with the photo of the Honorable Minister, I mean, Adam, boldly <laughs> displayed. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so you now, so you now see that that publication was false, to say the least. And thank you. Okay, uh, uh, please. I asked how much, now that we are in pay, um, we are 
no service here is still not dead. What is the debt service to revenue ratio we are doing now? And then what do we expect to do when we conclude, you know, the MOU with the official, the official creditor committee and then the other uh, bondholders? Okay, thank you for the question. Yeah, Mr. Akis. Right, thank you very much, Honorable Minister, and thank you for the question. Um, the one the answering is Professor Akis. <laughs> He's the director in charge of treasury and debt management. Honorable <laughs> Minister, thank you for that uh, <laughs> elevation. <laughs> but then um, the target and the threshold for a country like Ghana is supposed to be 18 um, percent. So external debt service to revenue of 18 percent. And uh, without the MOU, without the debt restructuring, in some of the years you'll be recording almost up to 45%. So these initiatives as one of the performance um, and then the importance of the MOU is to be able to reduce that ratio from almost as high as 40% in some of the years to 18% and below 18% by 2028. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh Professor Arkes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Honorable Ministers, I believe that's the last question. I haven't seen any hands up. Oh, okay. Then I take that to be the last question because we've already done it now. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Michael Lubudu. I work with TV3. Um, Honorable, being reservations with a high rate of uh, high rate. on uh, attractive. There have been studies that system uh, for every treasury to, to also purchase a bond, not buy the market. Why is it so high when you have some level of monopoly over the market? Um, number two also, you've mentioned some uh, programs you've introduced, but the bottom line is fuel prices are still quite high. Uh, how prices are still quite high, averaging over 14 CDs per liter in the country. What to address this particular challenge? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Professor Arkes will handle the, the question on the T-bills. But for the fuel prices, it is not just fuel, uh, fuel prices alone, but the, our domestic economy is also... Um, influenced by uh, global happenings. I mean, and the uh, fact that uh, its generate has suffered as a result of some of the reasons I, I enumerated, including the, the US currency, will certainly have effect on fuel prices. If you look at the formula for uh, fuel prices in Ghana, it is heavily linked to Forex. And so the measures that we have put in place to address the problems associated with the depreciation of the city will in no small measure also heavily affect fuel prices eventually. And so we are addressing some of these factors. But let me say also that it is because of our realization that some of the policies we are implementing will have some effect. And then when they mature, then the positive gains will emerge from those. That is the reason government has increased spending on social interventions to help the poor and the vulnerable in particular cope with the temporary cost associated with our policies. While we all wait to see how these policies will endure eventually in terms of the gains to our economy and to our people. And so, um, if we did not increase the spending, it, it will mean that the vulnerable and the poor in particular will be overexposed, will be overburdened. And so a sensitive government, a government that is so concerned about the plight of the people, would take such a responsible decision of adjusting the allocations that we make, the spending on the uh, poor and the vulnerable, in, in order not to leave them behind, in order not to get them worse off. And this is why, in particular for LEAP, we have also indexed it. Because 
we are in, a, in an era of high inflation. And we know that. Government acknowledges that. Inflation was around 54%. Now it is 25%. The 25% is still high. We admit that. And this is why we are working hard with the Bank of Ghana to ensure that inflation at the end of this year reduces to 15%. And then eventually to 8%, 8 plus minus 2% by 2020, 25. And so when you are in, an, in a high inflation uh, uh, era, a responsible government, as I said, will want to help people cope with, with these challenges. And this is why you see us increasing spending in the, in the social uh, interventions. Gone were the days when you embark on an IMF program, you know, uh, it, it, it was just austerity, austerity, austerity. But we have been very intentional this time around in negotiating the IMF program so that we, we, we have benchmarks even within the IMF program that commit us to certain levels of spending on social interventions in order for people to uh, be somehow, um, how do I say, insulated from the effect the program uh, policies will, will bring to bear uh, on them. And so that is what I can say about this uh, uh, leap and the other social interventions. But for the the T bill rates, Prof. Akest, once again. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, let me just put it into context. Before 2023, for almost four or five consecutive years, the average interest rates on all government instruments, from Treasury bills to all the bonds, was about 21%. Now, the DDEP restructured an exact amount of 203 billion Ghana cities, total weighted average of about 9.1 percent, so 9.1 percent on 203. We just heard Honorable Minister making reference to the net domestic financing of about 62 billion. So if the rates now, as Honorable Minister said, 25, 26, 27, that's the reason behind your question, is comparing the 25, 26, 27 that it is high. But then when you look, look, it will be applicable to only the 60 billion. Take the 23, 24, 25 on the 60 billion and take 9.1 on the 200. When you put it together, the weighted average is 13.7%. So when you look at it from a portfolio or a risk perspective, it is even lower than any of the past five years. So that risk, in terms of the government's ability to service them, is eliminated. Second point is these are treasury bills. They are being issued on a week to week basis. In nine in three months it gets eliminated. So when the inflation gets to fifteen percent, rates get below twenty, all of them will be reset. This is not the same as bonds. If a bond is ten years, even if inflation goes down, you can't change the, the rate. So the beauty of it is that these are short um, term actions you are seeing and once in the medium term we get to eight plus or minus of inflation, you should be seeing all of them almost tapering towards the lower end of the, of the teens. So no, Minister, I think that's what I can say for, for that explanation. Thank you. So oh. you see why he's earned the title, yeah. Professor. <laughs> so. Honorable Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media, uh, unfortunately, that we've done two rounds already and done over an hour. So with your kind permission, uh, let's do a final account for our guests and media partners and draw the curtain on today's presser. If I saw your hand and didn't and haven't called, be rest assured the next session there is a priority arrangement to make sure uh, you ask your questions. Uh, with us uh, this morning once again is our host and Minister for Finance, Dr. Mohammed Amin Adam, also MP for the, the good people of Karaga constituency. Also with us is Honorable Abna Osei Asari, Minister of State at the Ministry of Finance and Member of Parliament for Etiwa East constituency. We are joined by my good deputy, Honorable Sarah, uh, who is Deputy Information Minister and Member of Parliament for Botiano, English, Amount from Constituency. We are also joined by Honorable Deputy Minister for Finance, Chief Director of the Ministry of Finance, Madam Eva Mens. 
we also have some special guests here with us is the honorable minister honorable deputy minister for fisheries and aquaculture development and mp for Mion constituency honorable musa abdulaziz ayaba also with us this morning is the ceo of maslock madam abidani mahama zakaria ladies and gentlemen uh, we also have with us directors and staff of the Ministry of Finance and our friends from the media, we acknowledge you as well. And once again, we acknowledge Joy News, Asasi Radio, ABC News, GA Live Feed for the general public at the next session. Enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>